Hi, I'm Tim Lane with Tight Lines Fly Fishing Company, and today we're going to tie the Tim's Muppet. Um, the Muppet's a fly that we use for smallmouth bass, subsurface pattern, gets down deep, really good for early season fish, and then later in the fall when, uh, when they go a little bit deeper. But the materials that it uses are uh, the hooks, we're going to use a TMC 8089, and this is a size 10. The body itself is going to be used. Uh, I think this is a variegated cray crawfish rabbit strip, medium dumbbell eyes in yellow, the legs, round yellow rubber legs, and on the body itself I use a little bit of uh, diamond braid in gold. And we'll be using a little bit of yellow crystal flash too just for some highlights and stuff in it. The thread is uni thread and a size six odd. So I'll get started here. Build a thread thread base first. And at this point if you want, it works out pretty good. You can put the lead eyes on. And something that's important here is I need to leave enough space because I'm going to be creating a dubbing loop and I need to keep enough space. So maybe three eye widths away uh, I'm going to tie those eyes in. At that point, if you wanted to secure them, you could put a little zappa gap on them or something just to make sure that they don't slip. I'm going to grab a clump of this is lemon yellow crystal splash or yellow crystal flash. And this is going to be the gape of the hook. Tie that in. Cut off the excess. Now what I'm going to do is affix the tail of this crayfish orange rabbit strip. I'm looking for the straightest rabbit that I can find on the hide so it doesn't bend over and look goofy. And the piece with the leather, I want the leather piece itself to be about the length of the shank when I tie it in. Maybe pull a little bit of the rabbit off the front here just so it gives me a better place to tie in so it's not quite as bulky. And tie it right on top of that yellow crystal flash. I'm going to put a couple pieces of topping on here, a few pieces of that lemon yellow crystal flash. I think I have maybe five or six strands here, a little bit longer so it extends past the rabbit strip. Essentially, the back end of the fly is done make the body next. And I'm going to use gold or copper diamond braid just to create a little bit of a body here. I always start with a longer piece because I need it for for bulk to try to bulk this up where this big lump is going to be here. See in just a sec. I want to leave a big space here that's as far forward as I want to bring this because I have to create a dubbing loop to make this big fluffy head. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dubbing loop right here right behind where the diamond braid is uh, and I'm going to leave that hanging. I want to make the dubbing loop pretty big so I'm going to make a loop like this I'm going to cross my thread over the loop I'm going to make sure that it is right behind that gold diamond braid I'm going to put it right here out of the way for now. The next thing I'm going to use is the round rubber legs like these. And I always strip a big strand off so I have two rubber legs on it. Um, you know, two, two attaching, you'll see in just a minute. I'm going to cut a bigger piece than what I think I need here for the legs. I'm going to tie these on right behind the yellow eyes. make sure that they're pretty even. So tie it right behind there. I'm going to bring my thread forward and I'll 
take my thread and just zigzag, excuse my hands here, zigzag through these rubber legs a couple times just to make sure that they stay in place. I'm going to bring my thread forward. Now what I'm going to do to make sure that these legs stay up and out of the way, here's a cool little trick. I just grab these little guys, bring them forward to the eye, and throw one or two loops here, just to make sure that they don't get in my way when I'm doing the dubbing loop. Well, the next part of the fly is really a pain. A lot of people have asked us, well, why wouldn't you just take a piece of crosscut rabbit strip and wrap it through this? But if I did that on a crosscut rabbit strip or on a rabbit strip, you have all this leather and it would create way too much bulk with that leather. So we're trying to lighten it up but still add a lot of motion and movement to it. So what I'm going to do here, and this is a big trick to this fly, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut a bunch of this off right, right tight to the hide as I can. I'm going to just put it right over next to me out of the way for now. I'm trying to get the longest pieces I can get. The longest strands. You want to cut right next to the hide. To make this fly real buggy, it takes a bunch of hair to do this. Alright, here is the reason you can't use a crosscut rabbit strip. If I used this same amount with a rabbit strip, with that cross cut, you'd have all that bulk of that leather and you'd never be able to get the size out of it that I need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and take the dubbing loop that we had created. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm holding the dubbing loop. I'm going to use one of these dubbing loop twisters here, which will help me close that dubbing loop up much faster than if I use like a shepherd's hook or something. Just going to leave this hang here. Now here's always the tricky part, trying to get this all in the loop. Now that rabbit that I had set aside, grabbing it in clumps, open my loop up, I'm going to put the rabbit in. rabbit hair in there. Now here is something that's key. I want this hair as long as I can get it. So I'm going to take these little butts and push them as close to the string as I can of that dubbing loop so I can get as much length out of this as I possibly can without getting all that fluff. So I keep it long. I spread it out. Good spacing to ensure that I get a real, real long head on it. And then I'm going to start spinning it to close it. Now as I'm spinning it, I'm going to grab a bodkin, and I'm going to start picking it out as I spin it so none of the fibers get trapped. And you'll know you've spun it enough when you go in here and you can kind of pluck at it a little bit. You want to just make sure none of the clumps of hair are coming out. You want it to be in there nice and tight. Okay? Now, I'm going to start rotating this and spinning this around almost like you know, folding a feather. You're going to fold this hair as you go back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it like this and I'm going to fold it so all the fibers lay back. And as I do it, I'll pick it out. Okay, now when we get to the legs, 
right behind the eyes, which is where we're at here. I'm going to undo these guys, let them kind of flop around here. And now I can separate these. I kept them together just for ease of, of tying. And now I'll take my bodkin and I'll poke right into the leg. If I can. There we go. And I'll separate them. Now I got both legs there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other legs. Now what I'm going to do with that dubbing loop, this is tricky. I'm going to go in between both of those and that'll keep them in place permanently. In front of the eyes now. I want to get as much rabbit in there as I can. Okay, now I got it. Got all the wraps that I need in there, and I'm going to tie it off. And just separate here as much of the hair as I can so I can get my thread through there. Let's try to make a clean head. Cut that dubbing loop off. Finish him. Pick them out a little bit more. Okay, now the legs are too long here. There's no real rule of thumb on the legs, but you know when I'm fouling, I'm gonna come up here, just kind of grab all of them together. Trim them. And that's pretty much the Tim's Muppet. Uh, Bart and I started fishing this, I think, 99 or 2000. It's been one of our staples pretty much ever since.